Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Am Anthony, I in the shot? I, you are in the shot. Now you're even more in the shot. Okay. Anthony, uh, am What's I in up? the shot? Hey, I was thinking, wouldn't it be fun um, to do what happens when two street epistemologists meet? And, sure. And we just thought, we go, hmm. And you go, hmm. Hmm. I'm like, hmm. Hmm. What do you mean by hmm? Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Just, just <laughs> it's, a, it's a minute of hmms back and forth. <laughs> I can definitely that longer. longer. Put it up, put it on your picture. I, 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 so, um, we had a really great time. It was really great meeting you, by the way. It was fantastic meeting you. Yeah. Yeah, for uh, sure. This is really, really cool. And I wish more people around the country knew about SE because it's just more people to connect with. Yeah. I have found that I have some challenges for SE that I've ran into. Um, recently, there was as a, a practitioner. As a practitioner, just some like huh. there are some clear dead ends that won't make SC vi a viable option, hmm. and I think that I want to run them by you and see if you found a way to get around them or not. Sure, sure. Okay, so uh, as a terms of the methodology of changing people's mind, I found that it is a strictly conversational tool, and if someone's not willing to have a conversation with you, you mm -hmm. can't do SC. Right. That means if you're sitting down with someone and they're talking to you, but they're not answering honestly. Or they want to just preach and that's it. Mm -hmm. Or they're not answer. Or you know, they they want to divert the topic because they're clearly putting up a wall that yeah. you're not going to get around. Yeah, you can't do SC period. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can't really contest that. If the person doesn't want to sit down mm -hmm. or they obfuscate, whether they're doing it intentionally or not, sometimes I think maybe they're doing it intentionally. Sometimes it could be an uh, involuntary defense mechanism mm -hmm. too. I feel. What you could try to do is call attention to the behavior that you seem to be noticing. Don't accuse them of it, hmm. but say, you know, normally when I have conversations, it's really easy to pick a topic, or hmm. we, we pick the topic and I can explore the reasons why and maybe the method that, they, you're, that they're using to conclude that those reasons are good, hmm. and yet with this situation, it doesn't seem to be happening. It, are, could there possibly be any reasons why that's, that's, that might be happening? Do you, sure. do you agree? Yeah, 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 yeah. Another thing that you might try is Ask them to question you about something. Switch the tables a little Switch bit. Switch the table. Say, when I, I, I like to engage where we explore what, why, and how, these reasons, and I don't want to focus on the person. I want to get down to the method. Mm. Do you, would you be willing to question me on something so that I can model the kind of conversation I'm hoping to have with you? Oh. Because they may not even... If they, they're still willing to that extent. They may yeah. be obfuscating in your mind, but maybe they're not really doing that. Sure. That maybe they think that that's the, the approach that they're that you're expecting. Mm. You know, so actually demonstrating them in a way what you're hoping to achieve, sure. the type of dialogue and where you're hoping to go, mm. could maybe open them up to it. Now, if we're talking to a career apologist, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. like a uh, Cy Ten Bergke, for example. Mm. I've seen Raul have those conversations with him, mm -hmm. and it was, we were we were thinking about like, what's a really good way to talk to a guy like this who's clearly not interested in having that kind of approach and knows what words to say like, oh, you asked me a confidence skill. This is what the confidence skill means, guys. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna answer this question because what he's really trying to get to is like, mm. okay, I found like, in a situation like that when you're dealing with an apologist or if you're dealing with someone who is versed enough with SE to be easily offended by words for the sake of being offended hmm. so that they don't have to talk about their epistemology. Mm -hmm. um, it might be good to go with a completely different method mm -hmm. rather than mm -hmm. SE mm -hmm. as far as getting them to understand. I like the role reversal, mm -hmm. but if we were to switch to, I heard someone say a goal-oriented approach. It's like, okay, I won't, let's, let's move the methodology aside as, as the word methodology. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what is the goal that we both want to see in the world? What's good? Hmm. What, now that we both have something that we agree on, mm -hmm. what's a good way to get to that goal together? Okay. It's still methodology in a sense, but mm -hmm. you're not using the same trigger words or something like if that. You're asking, you if you're asking me what other ways might there be to yeah, get through what's to some people good alternatives, like that? basically. Okay. Uh, possibly telling a story, mm -hmm. sharing, a, sharing a story where you had a conversation with somebody and it caused them to reflect on something, or maybe you yourself embarked on the type of conversation you're hoping to have, mm -hmm. and then you ended up changing your mind, lowering your confidence. That might be helpful. Um, with folks like that, would you suggest dipping into counter apologetics a little bit? No, mm. no, I still won't go that route. Mm. Uh, I mean, there are lots of ways to, to I suppose, you know, foster an environment where you might be changing a person's mind. Yeah, telling a story, sharing some of your background, mm. um, but 
with folks that are really dug in, sometimes I think uh, building trust is really the best place to go from the start. Leslie, if I had to meet somebody like an apologist. Sure. And I've an actually, agnostic I've actually, atheist. Yeah, somebody who's dogmatic. Yes. Well, it's not even like, it doesn't have to be a apo- religious apologist. Right. When somebody's dug, dug in and dogmatic about their views, sometimes I think one of the best things you can do is just spend an hour just getting to know them. Mm. Find out about their background. Where did, they, where did they go to school? What did they study? I get it. Because the more you understand about their background, you're going to open up trust. They're going to learn more about you. They'll see you more as a person. You'll see, more that, uh, see them more as a person. And you might actually find examples that they will relate to you. Uh-huh. So, for example, if your job was to inspect cooking vats or something like that, and, that, and you spent 30 years doing that, mm. that might be a really great vehicle to explore some of these concepts where you're not even talking about God. Mm. You know, when it came to coming to, to study the standards that are associated with that industry, how did you come, go about doing it? Did you embark on this training thing? How did you figure out that you were wrong? Could the standards have been wrong? So you're saying it's worth time to invest even more time to get to know the person that's, before you even bring SE into the situation. That's the thing. But, the, but see, that's, there's a downside to it, too, because yeah. my time is valuable. Exactly. Do I Do I really want to spend literally days, possibly, with a person who is so dug in and dogmatic building up that trust? And will that be effective? It, 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 it probably will, but I think the time commitment... My time is really valuable, mm. So and yours is, too. Mm. It could be more effective for me to have 100 conversations with individuals mm-hmm. than one conversation in that same amount of time with one person. Yep. Right. Multiple conversations with one person. Okay. So, so in that same, s- go ahead. same angle, mm-hmm. instead of you having that conversation, getting to know the person and you having the conversation, make SE so ubiquitous that maybe someone who knows that person very well there you go. can have that conversation with There you them. go. Yeah. Yeah, I've always I've always been a proponent of trying to get as many people to learn this as possible because, and I actually talked about this in my talk a little bit, like nibble at the edges, mm. because I could have a very short talk with somebody, and it may have been the first time that they ever questioned anything. But if there's if someone like you comes along who also continues that, it's going to make it easier. Sure. And and by the time you come along, maybe maybe there are thirty people in between me and you. Mm. You're the next person to come along. And you ask that last question. Okay. That is required for them to just completely abandon it. So this this that isn't really just I really appreciate you telling me this. This, th- this isn't just one person. This isn't the the, the weight of the, the the burden here isn't mm. just on one person. Mm. So take that weight off of yourself. Have one little conversation, make one little dent. Right. But just recognize that that one conversation could be the last bite. <laughs> That's such a corny way of putting it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. All right, so I'm going to ask a question that I, know I have not asked anyone yet. Or I've asked this question a lot, but never face-to-face. Um, mm-hmm. You've seen my videos of doing SE Talks. Mm-hmm. What do you think I could do better? Hmm, okay. Um, I noticed that you have a tendency. You're, you're so uh, friendly, mm-hmm. and you listen really well. And one thing that I noticed is that when somebody says, well, I guess I picked up this belief in Germany when I was there on leave, and you're like, I was in Germany too! Oh my gosh, yeah, and, yeah. And it's great, because you're, you're bonding with them, mm. but I think there might be a tendency to be really um, looking for opportunities to share more about yourself, mm. when is, when, and, and I don't know if that's wrong or not, because then they light up and you're like, oh, we have something in common, that's great. Uh, and yet, I do wonder if, when we're when I have these conversations, I try to set my my stuff aside. I have noticed that. Yeah, so I don't, I, and I'll share it. Like I'll, I'll tell that I have a wife and two kids, and blah blah blah. I live in San Antonio, and I don't believe. But like that is literally as much as I know about you. Right. Right. Yeah, and maybe this is just a personal thing, like a personal preference, where huh. I I don't think it's necessary to incorporate too much about my background or whatever. Although, hearkening back to the previous thing that I said, if I mm. was if I was going to meet a dogmatic person, mm. I think it would be necessary for me to give a lot about myself. Yeah. So I'm just saying... I'll tell you, if you spend a lot my, of time in Kentucky, you're going to know everything about everyone. This may be a cultural thing. Once they had shake hands yeah. with Yeah, and it may, maybe it's because I grew up in Chicago, and, <laughs> and you know, we kind of keep... Th- maybe, maybe I'm stereotyping here. Maybe we keep things close to the chest, sure, only yeah. reveal what you need to reveal. No. But that was just one thing I noticed, like... But that's suck up time. And, and also, I'm like, I want to get to the method. What's the method? Oh, yeah, And it's like, yeah. there's there's this... Rapport building is great. Mm-hmm. And I'm not trying to say this to dissuade you. That's just one thing that I'm wondering if... Um, less focus on yourself and more focus on them and their reasons and their method. Maybe. Mm-hmm. But that's maybe the only thing that just comes to mind off the top of my head. Um, 
I mean, and I say that because uh, I say that reluctantly because I don't want to discourage you from doing what you're doing either. Ugh. Because maybe that's like the more effective way of doing these things. Maybe I would actually be better if I was like, you're from Germany, you went to Germany, I was in Germany too. You know I can tell I mean? you there's something with some benefits. It does calm me down a little bit. Yeah, there's but something I, to that, there's something to be said for that, sure. If I were going to say that if there was like a mental advantage is there's something called redlining that I've, that I've been saying for like Essie when it's just deep held question, deep, deeper digging question, deeper digging question, yeah, deeper yeah. digging. Yeah. People get exhausted from that. Hmm. And when you can just be like, okay, let's back it up a little bit. What's a good way to like just take a couple of breathers before we ah. go back down again? Just a little rapport building session where it's like, now we're talking about mm -hmm. me. Let's dig down. You're asking again. me what, what happened or what's going on. Do you think that's that? like a good. Uh, have you found that to be effective? Have you tried that before? Sure. Um, I'm always a consciously aware. I try to be consciously aware of the the emotional impact of the questions that I'm asking. Yeah. Because uh, I want to walk that threshold of comfortableness and mm. uncomfortableness mm. with them. Uncomfortable enough to the point where they're like, Man, I don't know if this is really true and that type of thing. But comfortable enough where they're willing to share like the most personal things. Sure. So sometimes it tips over the edge, and they're like they're increasingly comfortable. They seem agitated. They're fidgeting with their clothes. They're looking around. Yeah, they're, they're looking at their watches. Make right. Sure, like, yeah. I just did the same thing at the exact same time. <laughs> and and those are things I guess to look out for. If they have the the business card, sometimes they they, they just start playing with the card a little bit more. Mm, possibly. Uh, God claim. Sometimes, uh, but sometimes they need a little like a natural reliever. Like somebody walks by and they have a cute dog. And yeah. Like, oh, look at that dog. Yeah. You know, you have any dogs? And then um, we chat for a little bit, and then we reset it again. Mm. Okay, if you don't mind, can we pick it up? And I'm always kind of asking for consent, too. Mm. Because if it seems... You may have noticed from my videos, I try to end it on a high point, too. Yeah. Like, you know, they're like, man, I've never really thought about that. And we're just at the, like, why they think it's true, not even that method. And yeah. they're like, why don't we just end it there, and we can wrap it up. But sometimes it's tempting, too. It's like, I know if I ask three more questions, mm. they're going to realize that they probably don't have a really good reason for this. So it's t it's t it's it's a it's a tough call sometimes. Sure, body language is a big deal for me, and I probably cue into it a little bit more just because of my background. Mm -hmm. But I I have noticed that I will give away more from just the way how I'm talking. So it's that when I'm at, at rendering videos, I'm like, oh, not only am I signing that out, but I can tell ah. that I'm controlling. I'm sort of like. There's a there's something called back and forth where it's like, right now you wouldn't be talking, mm -hmm. but when like actually right now you'd be saying I want to say something, Tyrone. I'm about to sign, and I'd be like, okay, huh. let me get back into this pose, and now you sign, and now when oh, I lean back, there's almost I'm, like send and receive yes poses. When I change my posture, I'm uh -huh. showing you I'm uh -huh. about to say something. Is it cool? Yeah. And then you stop, and then I start signing. Yeah. And so I've noted that when I'm doing these same things, I, I'll lean forward, lean back, and then this person I'm talking to will lean forward, lean back too. Mm, and I'm like, should I tell more people about this? Because this is a great way to mm -hmm. like control subconsciously conversation, or is this like more of like a, does it start to make, are all tricks that I'm noting worthwhile to share, or are they more of like the, I don't know if that's It almost might be dark a, side. is it a woo science, or are we just, um, yeah, I don't We're know. We're very impressionable. Like with our in terms of like mm -hmm. what we're looking at and how we and we may have a tendency to to want to make it easier to to understand people and mm -hmm. we're just interpreting these body these there I didn't really notice body language as much as when you know I started recording and looking at things but then when I added the secondary camera yes that's when I started noticing like dances going on oh yeah yeah, yeah. I was telling you about that like, were you when you had like the when you were having a conversation with a lady who was the friend. And you're questioning this person's God belief, and the lady went from standing here beside you to like just slowly oh, shimmering but over. We, but to okay, where the lady but, but our interpretation of what was happening in that video differed. I think. Okay, Do you remember what you thought was happening? Yeah, and then she what was I, standing next to her friend as you were beginning to challenge her belief. She's like, "I don't like this person. Talk to my friend. I'm okay. going to stand here." And then she started introducing herself to the conversation. Closed body language. She's not one in the time. Oh, yeah. Okay. See, I interpreted it differently. Go for it. She. If I remember right, if the two ladies I'm talking about, one of them was off to the edge. It was sort of going to be my helper, and then it kind of fizzled out, and I was sort of more of a one-on-one. -on -one. I don't think she circled around to be um, to defend her friend. I think she wanted me to ask her questions. Yes, both at the same time. Okay, I like, think she stop wanted to talk to my friend. I'll, I'm I'm here now. But see, I took that as like okay. ask me questions now, <laughs> <laughs> and I think you were taking it as <laughs> stop asking my friend questions. Yeah. 
Um, I can't wait till I'm a dad because then I can see the world in like dad vision. I feel like that would be like <laughs> this would be really great. Um, so I'm really really excited with SE. I think it's like it's just been a really fun time this last year of realizing, oh my gosh, not only is this possible, but I can continue to get better at this. Mm -hmm. I think, so my main goal for this is getting to the point where we do have a strategy that's good for talking to family. Because ah. I don't think SE is ideal for families or people who know you very well. Mm -hmm. but we, have, we definitely have a format that works for mm -hmm. strangers. It's mm -hmm. definitely almost even ideal for people who don't come into the conversation with any sort of personal baggage. Mm -hmm. but. Every single time I'm talking about SE in a way of like, hey, you can do this. The first question is, can I do this with my mom? Can I do this with my sister? Can right. I do this with my brother? Right. I don't think it's in the format where I, if it was my brother or my sister or my mother, that I could do it. But if I taught someone else to do it, maybe there's a better chance there. But what do you think is the future for that? I mean, I think it's critical that we develop SE in a way where it could be used in any situation, mm -hmm. even with family and friends. Mm. I do think it's tougher because I've actually used it with family and friends, and it's tougher. Yeah, because you are much more invested in the relationship. There's a cost. You have to meet them again next week. Yeah, that type of thing. Walking away is hard. They don't see you mm -hmm. like a person that they well, should take. You seriously. have a history with them, so they know that maybe they know your position on the stance. They maybe maybe you even argued with them about mm. the topic at hand. So it is tougher. Um, I've even had some family members say, "Now, don't you use that SE thing on me now." Or they said, "Are you using that SE thing on me now?" Yeah, ben and I gets said, that. "And I said, well, I, I, I'm really not. I don't think. I mean, mm. I'm just listening to you and asking questions, and you can ask me questions back in return." So maybe it, I do think it's a little tougher. I did write a blog post on how to use SE with loved ones, mm. where I give some recommendations where um, you can you can completely explain that you intend to be using this method with them. You can explain what it is. Maybe show them a video example and say, would you like me to give this a try? That's a little artificial and awkward, but you could do that. Sure. Um, you could wait for it to naturally come up. So you're on a car ride with your dad across you know, across the state or something, and then mm. it, the topic inv 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 invariably comes up. And you can engage in that. Yeah. Um, I think the amount that you would, you would invest into, I got to get to this goal, should be walked back to if you're dealing with a You can member. play a longer game, I suppose, yes. with SE. Like, the, you're not under the clock, maybe, so to speak. Right. Um, another thing, too, is you don't have to talk about the sensitive topics with your family and friends. You can use the method for any claim that they make. Mm. Uh, you can even ask them, like, say, you know, I've always been thinking about voting for this candidate. Mm. Um, would you be interested in asking me questions to see why I think that that's true? Okay. Or you can even choose much safer topics, too. It doesn't have to be about politics. Sure. And then teach them the method, and then maybe they'll use it on themselves. Okay. Um, here's my last point. Uh, I don't know. Is that see your job? <laughs> is that your main job Dude, now? What, does, <laughs> does, a job, does a job? Well, let's define job. Uh, does it mean getting paid doing so? Uh, it's your life. Not necessarily li your livelihood, but it's like this is now your your <laughs> Whether it's profitable or not, your career. I've called. It's. It's. I'm not making a dime from it. I. It's maybe bordering on vocation rather than like. It's maybe morphing from hobby to vocation and possibly oh, career. What's a vocation mean? I don't. Isn't know. that a great word? Yeah, yeah, I looked it up recently because I was like, maybe that's more indicative of what I do. Flash it up on the screen. Yeah. Okay. Okay, vocation. Or maybe we can look it up. Yeah. Yeah. Help me out. With you want to look up vocation and yes. read it to us? It just sounds like a fancier form for hobby. It's like a passion. It's passion? Okay. Yeah. But it is the thing where you're like, okay, get up. What can I do with SE today? What's my schedule? I'm constantly... A Thank strong you. feeling of suitability for a particular career or occupation. Oh, it's just... Okay. A trade or profession. Hmm. Like a passion about something. It's kind of morphing into a career in that, you know, I started as a practitioner, mm -hmm. promoting it, mm -hmm. um developing written materials on it, that type of thing. And I think we're kind of shifting gears. We're, we're planning to start a 501c3, Forestry right. Street Epistemology. Right, we right, have a right. board of directors, and I'll be the executive director. I think this sounds like more so of a job now. It's kind of shifting. So it's actually, it will change the way that I introduce myself if I'm going to initiate a talk on a campus or the trail. Right. I can no longer probably say, this is my hobby. I might have to say, 
I'm part of this organization right. where we go out and have conversations or wait for them to happen organically. Right. So it's a, it's a kind of a tough question for me to answer right now, but okay. I've always th- thought that that hobby is the most indicative of what it is. I don't think there's a bad connotation with job. I think mm. it's I think job is I job mean, tends to suggest chore though, and it's certainly not a chore because I love it so much. I love my job, and mm. I've worked really hard to get the skills that I could get to have the job that I yeah. have now, and I, I, it's incredibly rewarding. Mm-hmm. I know there's definitely people who don't have good jobs, but I would just say uh, occupation seems more laborious than anything. But it's definitely yeah. something more than just a, you know, like a part-time sort of a thing. That you, I mean, I'm, your let me let's put it this way. Yeah, I'm invested in it, mm. but not to the point where I wouldn't abandon it if we figured out that it was harmful or ineffective Got or it. something along those lines. So I'm not dogmatically passionate about it. How about this? I can throw it on me. Mm-hmm. I have a full-time career mm-hmm. right now, mm-hmm. and I fill in that free space with SE. Yeah. Uh, when I was I had when I had a much different work schedule, mm-hmm. I had a lot more time available to me. I'm leaning back now. <laughs> yeah, I had, a, I had a much more available time for me to do this. Sometimes yeah. a week at a time, we just none of my friends are available because they're all working regular hours. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to go to the park and talk to people because this seems mm-hmm. like a fun thing to do. Really, really fun to do, but. Now that I have a full-time job, I'm realizing, oh, this is a hard thing to turn off Yeah. when I'm ready to like focus on work. And when I have free oh. time, hmm. I can always stop work, but it's like, oh, the SE's still there. Yeah. How do you turn off SE? Do you it's, understand what I'm saying? I think I think There's I can relate to There's a train of it. thought where literally you're talking to people and you're like, oh, I'm finally doing SE. Great. I'm, I'm tickling that part of my brain. Mm-hmm. And it's it starts to become like, I found a new way to talk to people that's been very productive. Mm-hmm. New people, old people, mm-hmm. when I know an argument's about to come, mm-hmm. I, can, I can dismantle it or uh, disarm it with SE. Yeah. But it's one of the things where it's like, how do I have that, just the regular conversation with people? How do I mm-hmm. stop thinking about, why did I say that? What's a better way to say that? What's a word way to wordsmith it? Maybe I should text my friends and say, how do I, I know ask what you're good saying. morning better? Yeah, I follow you. <sighs> I, I don't know if there's an off switch. <laughs> there may not be. Um, I mean, I guess you could be. You could just decide. You know what? I'm not really interested in getting to the root of why someone thinks that this is true, and I'd rather just have superficial conversations with people. I, I suppose somebody could lose interest in it. Can you have a deep conversation with someone without having SE? Have you had? When's the last time you've had a deep conversation with someone where no SE was involved Tip whatsoever? It, that's a good question. Um, I meet a lot of people who are who are questioning, doubting. They're, they're in the process of abandoning a view. Mm-hmm. And there are times where I turn off the SE. I don't ask them probing questions that might instill doubt. Mm-hmm. I can very easily shift gears in that way mm-hmm. um, when the situation calls for it, where uh, they need an empathetic ear, someone mm-hmm. to listen to them. They're struggling. They need some resources. They, they need a shoulder to cry on or something like that. So um, it's not hard in that respect. But if somebody's making a claim that mm-hmm. they're certain is true, or they just make an offhanded comment. Yeah. Why would I not want to, to gently challenge on that? Like, right? That, that could actually help them if they if they stop promoting a position that's unreal, untrue. Okay. So um, that's why I say it's, it's, it's really kind of hard to turn off. Mm. But there are moments where, like, it's inappropriate. So I'll just set that tool aside, and I can engage with somebody and listen to them and hear them out. Okay. Well, these are more things for me to consider. I know this won't be the first time we talk with each other. Can I ask you one more question? Yeah, Can I ask you a question? You got questions? Go for it. What time is it, by the way? Uh, it's uh, it's 51. 4.51. Okay. Yeah. We have to get out of here soon. Yeah. Sure. I'm wondering what you think would be your greatest improvement since you started doing this. Mm. I stopped trying to emulate you. Huh. Yeah. I think when I first started doing this, I had the, the marker board. Yeah. I had the mic and the camera, and I was walking to the churches, and I was talking to people, mm-hmm. and I was, what would Anthony ask here? What's the what's the flow? Mm-hmm. What's that you know the flow chart that you'd go through? Mm. And I realized I was stressing myself out while I was doing that. Are you listening to this, folks? <laughs> <laughs> this is good. I was literally making myself really uncomfortable to the point where it's like, I don't want to, I don't even want to do SE anymore. I don't think it's worth me doing is it because you were pretending to be somebody you weren't that plus I wasn't getting the answers that you were getting so I was getting frustrated with that 
I wasn't able to reach that point where I could ask, start asking the questions you wanted to, so I was forced conversations to go to certain places. Mm. And I was listening back on myself because I was recording it back then. I'm like, that doesn't even sound like me. In fact, wow. I'm agreeing with the person I'm talking to more now that I'm hearing it again like a week later than I am me. Like whenever I'm talking, I'm like, why would you say that? Yeah. Oh, that's me. Yeah. This is not good. So I'm glad that you raised that actually. Yeah. That's I, a concern of mine. Okay. That people might emulate or copy mm. rather than observe, learn, and then bring their own style to it. Mm. And that's what I think is so good about the way that you're approaching it is that like you have a distinct style. Oh, thanks. That's one of the reasons I was a little reluctant to tell you like what I think you can improve on because I don't want to dissuade you from being you or to come around to being more like me. Mm. Um, but I do also want to give you feedback on things that I see because I think sure, I'd be yeah, doing yeah. you a disservice if I didn't. Right, right, right. So like... I, I even had I had a copy of the manual for creating atheists, but I chose mm -hmm. not to read it. I'm like, mm. I don't want to read this book. Have you ever read it? I had listened to like the first couple of chapters on the audiobook, and I was like, yeah. And then I stopped because I don't want to be I don't want to be the guy who was like, why do you believe this? And I give you a list of names. I want to tell you why I believe it, mm -hmm. and I feel like I have enough grounds to explain why yeah. my position is rational, and I'm open to being wrong. So if someone mm -hmm. can prove it, I'm totally fine with it. I'm actually thinking that I could really relate to what you're saying about you're um, emulating something that you've seen and then realizing it didn't mesh. Yeah. I did the same thing because mm. I read the book and tried to emulate what I thought the book was yeah, the promoting. Peter, I'm sorry, but the book has some terrible dialogue <laughs> examples. If it makes you feel any better. I was in the grocery store and some lady was like, bless you. I was like, why'd you say bless you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, hmm. So what I, what, what, what I found is that like the, the style of SE that seemed to be promoted with the book didn't mm. really mesh with my own style. Right. So I, I, I just was, I was like, you know, I just need to be me. Right. And yes. then I just did this. And that was, that was when I was like, I think it was the Tim talk that I had. He's like this, just this cool dude. And I was like, it's all coming together. Like, I feel yeah. really good, comfortable. I feel like I want to have a conversation casually mm -hmm. and I'm going to dip into SE mode and then just work my yeah, way down and then yeah. get back to casual and yeah. if I'm comfortable well, this, we'll go down together this, again this goes to a whole other discussion about what exactly is SE yeah, are there standards and I wish we had 30 more minutes to talk <sighs> about this yeah, stuff same here. because uh, because there's so much we can talk about yeah we got, five. we got five minutes and we actually have to get out of here before they lock yeah. us into the library alright 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 but yeah I guess for closing then um, yeah, it's unfortunate because there's a myriad <laughs> of things that we should, we like could said, and should talk about. This won't be the first time we talk, I imagine. Yeah. Well, you never That's, know. What we never know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want to say anything oh, with absolute certainty with this guy. <laughs> you, said, you said this won't be the first time. It won't be the first time. Yeah. It, yeah. This won't be the last. This won't wait. be the first time. You said this won't be the first. This won't be the last. Why time. doesn't that make first? Time? Oh, this won't be the first time. Well, this isn't the first time. I can okay. guarantee you that. This was not the first time that we talked. So it, it the is the first time, time on camera. Oh, the first time. Yeah. Well, it won't be the last time. Yes. It won't be the last. See time. what happens when you get too straight epistemologist. I'm tired. This I'm tired. Yeah. We taught a good class today. <laughs> We're already good. Anyway, Anthony. thank you so much, dude. Thank you, man. All right, thank you. keep it up. You too. You too. Let's do it. Thank you.